you. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank the organizers for accepting my abstract. And uh, can I say? Um, once again, my name is Katarzyna Hrabasz. Um, I'm coming from Poznan University in Poland. I'm doing PhD and uh, I would like to present uh, my topic of interest, a powerful death, decapitation and clustering of human skulls in the ancient Near East. Uh, burials reveal a great deal of information about an individual at personal level. Information about diet, age, at death and personal wealth or status can be gathered from human remains. These individuals might be selected based on gender, age, high status, or based of, uh, on achievements or inherit from one ancestor or a combination of variables within the community. Yet there is more to be learned in the mortuary record than status of individuals. Mortuary rituals, specifically secondary mortuary practices such as removal of all or some parts of deceased are powerful means of social integration during periods of social economics or environmental change. This slide shows the process of human body parts circulation at the time when this kind of change may occur. This practice of school pastoring involves community members excluding the skull of select individual which has been plastered or, or and painted. The level of focus and decoration on the skull varies geographically. As we can see on the map, I marked uh, selected uh, 11 sites, as well as I choose two examples from central Anatolia, but only one is visible on this map, is Chapel Huyuk, uh, but the other ones are Ashikli Huyuk and Kosh Huyuk, and I'm going to mention only Kosh Huyuk. Representative, uh, of course, different periods of uh, time. The important mortuary practices occurred in between late Natufian and following preparatory Neolithic periods. Previous discussion of school removal in the South Central Levantine at Ceramic Neolithic have advanced our understanding of secondary mortuary practices in the prehistoric context by providing descriptive accounts and pre pre preliminary I'm sorry, interpretation of how this practice may have been linked to ancestral worship. Expanding upon these studies, I argue that school removal as a form of secondary mortuary practice reflects one of several aspects of ritual belief system focused on enhancing community cohesion in the PPNA uh, period and later in the middle PPNB period. At Jericho, which is located in Israel, study revealed 12 human skulls dated uh, back to the middle PPNB period. All were discovered in the same domestic context. Nine of them at the time of exploration had the eye socket filled with curly shares. Kafar Kaholes, uh, which is here, uh, located in Israel, all discovered model schools are dated back to middle PPNB period. A model school was found in the domestic context. In the domestic context, pit uh, containing also headless human body. At Ein Gazal, there were three skulls that were modeled and three modeled heads that had no school inside. They were discovered in the central area dating back to the middle PPNB period. And at Ein Gazal, they discovered also a total of 32 statues and busts. Kosh Kuyuk is an archaeological site from the central Anatolia. During the excavation season, a large number of adults and children have been found. Some of them have been found with model schools. 13 model schools are dating back to the period, which is uh, covered uh, a half colitic period, and two model skulls were found on the plastered floor and nearby, nearby three additional and modified skulls. So this evidence suggests prominent social differentiation within the Neolithic communities, but the presence of social stratification and his significance, as well as ancestor worship, is still debated. Um, furthermore, selection of individuals for Prestel School is still remain to be studied. And the question is, why uh, decapitation and clustering of human skulls occur during the uh, early and late middle PPNB period, and uh, what's happened when they disappeared in late PPNC period? But 
let's change the topic. Let's go to the central Anatolia and let's check what happened in the same time. As an example, um, it's Chavalhuyuk. It's most well known for its Neolithic occupation. Throughout this occupation, is distinctive as a place for both living and dead. Considering this site throughout the lens of funeral archaeology can advance this understanding as a one of the examples for unique burial practices during the prepotary Neolithic period. Practices which inform us about others buried in exclusive ways and the living members of the communities that carried out these treatments included burials characterized by, by unusual grave inclusions, body treatments and location within the building. This study compiled uh, the av available uh, mortuary data collected by research team and my own study during the past years of the excavation. Based uh, on previous studies, as well as on the availability of the sources from mortuary records, this study examined the data to identify and interpret unique funerary behavior with particle emphasis to establish the current importance of the Neolithic burial practices in the domestic context. This is dating uh, system of Chakalhuyuk. Interestingly, its so-called classic period, which is marked by uh, red color, revealed the greatest amount of burial found in a typically domestic context. This is just an example of buildings, which I took into the account for my analysis. Mm, and this is uh, the end of the, let's say, classic final period at Chakalhuyuk. And continu uh, continuity and repetition is apparent in many aspects of life at Chapelhuyuk. This tendency might have been seen in ar architecture. Houses are built, built, I'm sorry, one on top of another. House uh, is divided by areas. Clean platform areas are located in the north and dirty work floors in the south, near the ovens and herds. Storage room often located in the southern or um, to the western or eastern walls of the house. During this classic level, so around about 6400 BC, the over overwhelming majority of burials at Chateauhuyuk occurred within the house, typically underneath the northern and eastern uh, platforms of the central room. The most buriers are uh, primary, of the field's placement of fully articulated individual, but some might be secondary, which means at some point after burial, the body or parts of the body were intentionally exhumed and reburied or treated in an alternative location. Many skeletons are clearly disturbed, and some burials on, um, contain only crania, while others contain individuals with their skull removed or the body in, uh, in its entirety. Burials are also generally located under the frost, but sometimes are deposited in the fields of old buildings. So the empirical evidence were selected from different across uh, areas across Chapel Huyuk East, North Sort TPC area. Using single context method altogether, uh, 290 skeletal elements were recognized, among them 167 individuals and full statistical methods were applied when the time varying phenomena was observed. It was possible to distinguish the individuals buried into the grave in the building using a quantitative method. Excuse me. Moreover, the relationship between the occurrence of burials and grave guts, as well as the presence of painting, were studied using also the qualitative method. It was helpful to possibly check the reason for depositing the individuals within some artifacts, as well as if the place for burying the dead were possibly connected to the painting. Interestingly, in most of the cases, we observed primary or primary disturbed deposition of the individual's body. Comparative analysis um, has been exam examined separately with the, uh, with, uh, the coding, coding uh, system. It was uh, possible, uh, possible to recognize the changes in time and space as well as the frequency of, of type of grave guts within particular building. Contextual analysis verified relation between the location of burial and age and sex of deceased. Among 167 individuals in the analysis, I noticed 88 individuals under 20 years of age and 68 individuals over 20 years of age. Variability was uh, really different. So uh, 
the amount and frequency of the uh, disease uh, was varied, depending on the house. When age is uh, taken into consideration in the location of burials, it becomes clear that juveniles were buried in a variety of contexts, but they were not restricted to any particular area of the house or space. Adults are also found in a variety of contexts, but not in the same uh, numbers of, uh, as, uh, as the juveniles. Predominance of neonates in several contexts on the site suggests a differential treatment as compared to adults and juveniles. The high number of neonates in the foundation burials might, might be related to beginning of the life of the house, but they might be also uh, they might be also have been just a convenient place to bury the high numbers of neonates. While, taking, uh, while talking about uh, the, um, this, one needs to be considered is a very high mortality rate of neonates and infants. These data sets indicate that the type of plants used for funerals vary by age. Um, one uh, kind of uh, plant seems to be used mainly for ma uh, as, a, as a mat for adults, whereas baskets for infants were made of different pl plant materials. Special care, uh, special care of neonates and infants in this study was also confirmed by the practice of burying the youngest individual in the basket made of special purpose plants. Grave guts seems to occur in certain order because of the individual's age. Artifacts such as bracelets, necklaces, bone decorative elements appeared mostly in infants' graves. In the case of adult graves, uh, grave guts have been made from different materials. There are artifacts of an ordinary function. As, such as flint tools bones. Layers covered uh, the red painted plaster was contemporary with the individuals located in the northeast corner of the buildings. Potential lining of the grave at pre-interment with pigments of the scattering of pigments after the body have been placed into the grave has been inferred in a few cases. In addition, an analysis of isolated skull and bodies without heads uh, have been made. Within this feature, three layers of events were distinguished. An isolated skull well located very close to the surface have no relationship with art, uh, with art and installation. The comprehensive analysis of headless individuals showed considerable repetition with regard to the burial location. Isolated human bodies were buried under the plaster platform in typical Neolithic position. In three cases, the body was lying on the back and one was lying on the stomach. Most of the cases were buried together with other individuals and skeletons were more disturbed as well as due to the possibility of taking out some parts of the body. But what happened uh, after the classic period? Um, red frame, uh, this is again uh, dating uh, at Chapel Hill. Red frame marked the, uh, the time period uh, which I was interested in a group of buildings dated to the late Neolithic period. And next slide will present uh, three buildings, so we'll uh, all together create sequences of repetitive practices. And beyond this uh, structural similarities uh, between the buildings were a series of repeated events seen within three structural phases. Uh, one uh, was uh, built uh, on top of another one. Um, so closely connected to the construction phases, all of the structures um, in this building sequence are burial placed within the southwest area of the structure. Another case of late architecture in Chapel Hulk is building 150, a very uncommon burial, a primary disturbed information of male buried with the head towards to the east with a narrow band painted in a cinnabar on the frontal bone of the skull, except um, for the articulated and partially articulated skeletons. Burials, uh, is in, the, um, burials in this building uh, belongs to the late Neolithic period in Chatalhuyuk. And uh, what happened after the classic period, after middle PPNB period? After this classic period, at Chatalhuyuk we have 300 years where there is no burial under the floor of the house and we can observe only burial chambers, uh, but in the domestic context they built these chambers, uh, they dug into the house. So. My question for the discussion is why in all of the cases they were deposited in the house, in the Middle East, uh, uh, Middle Eastern site mm -hmm. and as well in Anatolia, but uh, in the, um, using different time periods.
the case of Rantepau, which is a town a capital, uh, and capital of North Toraya Regency, which is known for the cultural center of Toraya ethic, ethnic, sorry, <coughs> presents some interesting avenues of research I currently pursuing at Chatalhuyuk. Besides the year house construction, house has been often used for place of both living <coughs> and death. Preparation for the funeral taking a year, the ceremony itself a week. During this waiting period, the body of deceased is wrapped in a several layers of cloth and kept preserved body in the bedroom or in the living room. The funeral ceremony takes, uh, itself takes place uh, on the square among residential buildings. Moreover, this is ceremonial death uh, of bulls and other animals. And the next case is Madagascar, uh, where the tradition is known as the turning of the bones. People bring uh, forth the bodies of their ancestors from the family crypts and then rewrap them in fresh clothes, uh, then dance with the corpses around the tomb uh, with, with the music as well. Uh, so, outstanding burials, let's, say, let's, uh, let's call them outstanding burials, are a symbol of social ranking. What happened when they disappeared in the late T uh, PPC, uh, PPC period? And what happened in the social aspect at this time? Person behind the model school, who is represented? And uh, <coughs> model schools are individualized some more, or it's uh, idealized representation of... It's uh, over. Uh, no, no, no. So <laughs> three, a couple of it's minutes. just a couple of hypotheses. Um, this is example is going to be a, uh, uh, is going to a point that we need to focus not only on the material culture but also to to, to look into the motivation for placing that body in the house, as well as how the, they could make this possible to live with their relatives as an ancestor in the line of kingship, or it was ancestor not gen genetically con related. Beyond our materiality, we can observe human thing, human human entanglement, which cannot be excluded from scientific explanation of people' behavior and, and the effects of their actions. Parts of individual bodies, primary crania and sometimes mandibles, seem to have circulated for a time before eventually being redeposited in a variety of contexts. But what caused the circulation of some bones? Why they obtained the name of secondary? How they became secondary? Taking into the account this example and archaeological evidence that the consistent uh, occurrence of unclear mingled remains mask a variety of pathways that body and body parts seem to have taken before the, their deposition under the floors of the houses. For some individuals, the journey appears to have lasted longer than uh, for the others. They could have been deposited at some point somewhere and after a period of time buried into the final burial pit but with totally different body ar ar uh, arrangement, tightly, unusually flexed, and for, so, for, for those reasons, they have made the light. And we have this example, for example, uh, in Chapa Hulk. These bones highlight a very important aspect that great care uh, was taken before the individual's death. So preparing the place for living in the afterlife, there are several possible explanations, I think. And I would like to...